Hi, my name is Slava. I am a product designer and I always wanted to build and launch my own mobile apps. And for the last three months, I've been learning how to do it with Flutter. Uh, this video is a checkpoint in my learning process. I want to share some obstacles I have met and uh, benefits uh, which I discovered actually. So uh, how did I start? I believe that uh, learning by doing is the best uh, approach to learn new things. So I had a couple of ideas of micro SAS applications I could start with and so I could come through all the process, you know, from the idea to launch. And for now, I released one and a half of my apps. Uh, one is an uh, educational app for beginner traders, and another one is MVP of AI trading plan generator available now on web. Uh, that's why I'm saying that only one and a half. Uh, so one app is in Google Play, uh, coming soon on App Store, and Another one is just a web app. So uh, before Flutterflow, I already work a little with Bubble, uh, Make, Ready Mac, and Webflow, which are also no code tools of choice for many people. And fun fact, my first website I've been building with Adobe Muse. It was years ago and also WordPress. And recently I also tried Adalo and Glide, and to be honest, I guess I wasn't motivated enough to uh, use them because I think I just waited for some instrument to appear which will be the most flexible, you know, and will allow to ship truly decent custom mobile apps. Uh, and then Flutterflow came in, yeah. Uh, after spending a couple of days uh, working on something for the first time, I realized finally we have it. We have it. something that deserves to be uh, to be learned. You know, something that deserves to invest some time and effort to learn it. I have to say that the beginning was quite challenging, despite the fact that I've been working in digital as a designer of different kind for more than eight years. Uh, for now. So the development process itself was not completely novel to me and still there were a lot of tech stuff I had to get to know to see some actual results. And so now let's see what obstacles and benefits I have discovered after three months of consistent using of Flutterflow. First, you better know Dart. Flutterflow is a low-code tool, not a no-code tool, and Dart is a programming language you'll be dealing with. And all the miracles possible uh, begin only with applying of custom code in this language. What kind of app would not use any custom code at all? Probably it would be something way too simple and pretty static. You know, uh, so it took some time for me to figure out how to craft uh, the custom code inside the Flutterflow to run it without any errors. Yeah, luckily we live in the wonderful time and you can achieve pretty good results without spending weeks or even months uh, learning how to code from the zero. And to be honest, all the code I used in my apps has been taken from ChatGPT uh, PubDev examples and community tutorials. And to be completely honest, 80% of the code I use has been written by ChatGPT. The main insight here for me was that it is not about that AI do all the work for you. The main insight is that it makes possible learning by doing yet solving the cases not from the books, but from your business requirements on the go. And the secret is that ChatGPT can explain line by line what's going on in this code uh, which it provided. And uh, uh, you're getting more and more familiar with it. You're starting to understand understand the syntax and uh, common patterns and stuff, you know, and still getting closer and closer to your app release. How cool is that? Second, domain knowledge on software development is a must. When you are developer, QA, designer, and DevOps in one person, it is difficult because you need to learn many new things from each of these fields. And not only common development workflows, practices and patterns, but also things like app architecture, iOS and Android platform features, user experience, Git, 
testing, payments, privacy, security, and many other important things, which you will have to learn. Definitely, it will make your learning curve even more steep if you're not familiar with like traditional way of development and its nuances. Uh, as an example, which comes first to my mind, uh, it's uh, no SQL database design. I had struggle with it and it still blows my mind sometimes. After good old SQL tables I'm familiar with, uh, I also had some struggle with uh, Google Cloud and Fire Storage with this uh, security rules and uh, other kind of things. Good thing is that Flutterflow has friendly community which you can ask for help when you face some trouble uh, beyond the Flutterflow documentation and tutorials. And of course, Stack Overflow will be your best friend as well as in the case of traditional development. I just never call this stuff, really. <laughs> Third one. You depend on Flutterflow. This one is pretty obvious and common when it comes to criticizing such instruments uh, like Flutterflow uh, because Flutterflow stability directly affects your productivity and some bug in release can put your work on hold. Uh, I also had bug which totally blocked me for one day. It has been fixed uh, on the next morning, but still, you know, this kind of things happen uh, literally to any software, but uh, when it's professional software used by people who have deadlines, it hurts. In fact, I guess you gotta live with that. You're dependent, yes, you're limited, yes, as with any no-code or low-code tools. This is the way, and uh, your product and uh, you will grow will grow with Flutterflow growing. And actually Flutter and Flutterflow, pretty young technologies, you know? Uh, so in my humble opinion, we also can make some impact to its growth, being active users and members of the community. So now it's time to talk about the benefits. And benefit number one, skip Figma. I've been drawing rectangles for years, started in Photoshop, Lila and Sketch, and finally in Figma, you know what I mean. Now I draw rectangles in Flutterflow, and what makes me happy is that these rectangles become interactive right away, just in a few clicks. And after a few more clicks, you have something actually working, you know? Uh, for sure, you would not skip Figma while working on the complex interfaces, but if we talk about just small apps or features, uh, you really can go just with the wireframes that you can make, I don't know, in Miro or whatever. <laughs> this is possible because you have the design system by default, which support uh, dark and light modes, a uh, bunch of different customizable widgets, the ability to create components, adaptivity, animations. So Flutterflow itself, it's a very nice design software, I would say. The second benefit is to get feedback super fast. Uh, I am convinced that feedback is crucial in development process. You gotta show your stuff to the world as soon as you can. So uh, the huge benefit with Flutterflow here is that you can share results of your work just by sharing the link. It will be fully working application available to stakeholders, fellow developers, clients, all the people uh, which may influence the existence of the product you're working on. Uh, so they will have access to it at any stage of development cycle. Why am I highlighting this? Because from my experience, getting the last working build usually takes time. And especially if you're not from development team, for example, as a marketing specialist, you may even have no clue what build is. Uh, and when you want to try the new app yourself, you got to ask developer or QA to install it to your phone. And developers, they are usually pretty busy to deal with you. And, uh, you know, uh, we have this problem. <laughs> Another thing is that with this app available by the link, user experience designers can conduct moderated usability testing easily with no any hassle. I think if you're crazy enough or your 
uh, our company you work in have very strong design culture and you test your uh, design decision before uh, launch them, you know, uh, you can use Plataflow as high fidelity prototype. But I used to use Protopy a lot in my work and usually after I make some nicely working prototype, I was like, whoa, it's, uh, it's almost like really working up. I wish I could connect real data to it to make it even more realistic. So with Plataflow, it is possible if developers supply with some uh, database sample or even API, uh, so you can make really red prototypes to test it on real users, get feedback before the actual development begins, and ship already way more effective and more feasible solutions. And the last but not the least benefit is that you will become more tech savvy. Designers, product and project managers, QA, and many others bring more value into development process uh, when they speak developers' language better. And while building apps with Flutterflow, you will, uh, you just can't get away uh, without learning uh, new, uh, difficult tech stuff. Uh, and in this three months, I feel like I've learned so many new tech things. So I feel like I use some part of my brain that I never used before, you know? And so even if I quit this Flutterflow hustling, I'm sure I will have competitive advantage on uh, labor market as more advanced IT specialist. So uh, I guess that's all I wanted to share for today. I hope that in the next three months, I will share another video when I will share some business results which uh, Flutterfall brought me. And I will be super glad for your comments. If you also use Flutterflow or you're just interested in some uh, no-code, low-code tools, please drop a line. Thank you very much for watching this video. Goodbye.